my question is for Valerie. You appeared alongside Jeremy in your last film, Declaration of War. Was there ever any discussion about you playing Marguerite yourself? I'm too old. <laughs> c'est ça. Si j'aurais pu jouer Marguerite, si j'avais pu jouer Marguerite. Was that your question? Que non, I have played Marguerite. C'est très intéressant parce que évidemment, je suis beaucoup trop âgée. Of course, I'm far too old to be Marguerite. It would have looked ridiculous. But when I saw the script, I wanted to play the part. En fait, j'avais envie de faire ce cadeau à une actrice. In fact, I wanted then to give this gift to an actress. Marguerite motivated me to make the film, and I wanted to find the perfect person to play the part. When I met Anaïs, it was obvious she was the right person. She's an exceptional actress, as everybody now knows. <laughs> what I want to say is that it's as though Marguerite, in fact, I can't hardly distinguish between Marguerite and Anaïs. They've become the same person for me. When I discovered Anaïs, I felt as though it was me as well. I felt I found, finally found an actress who resembles me. So I'm sure we'll work together often in the future as well. I was thrilled to direct her in the film. We hardly needed to speak to each other. We understood each other automatically without even saying things. Everything comes so naturally to Anaïs, and it was a total joy to film her. She is extremely photogenic, and she fully understood the character. She uh, is and becomes the character. And for me, that was a magical moment. I felt, uh, therefore, uh, uh, totally happy with the idea I couldn't play the part. Julien the initial script was called uh, Julien and Marguerite, de ce, de and one of the important things we did de, de se right at the beginning was to agree to reverse the order and say Marguerite and Julien. And this is something that transpires in the film. Marguerite is the linchpin. She's the heroine of the film. Bonjour, Bonjour, Laurent Ganassia de Radio Shalom à Paris. Radio Shalom, euh, Paris. Il y a une part très importante qui est faite dans le film à l'enfance. In the film, you see a lot of scenes about childhood, the childhood of Marguerite and Julien, and also you see a lot of children when in the um, boarding school, the girl tells the tale of Marguerite and Julien, a bit like a, a fairy tale. Was this uh, a way of protecting the spectator who knew it was a real story? but who could hardly atroce. imagine this horrible end. They, maybe people thought that there would be a happy ending. The fact that you told this like a terry, fairy tale enabled people perhaps to think there would be a happy ending. And how did the young actors react, uh, these uh, very young children, when they learned about the ending, which is so tragic? C'est-à-dire que... We wanted to show these scenes in an orphanage. The idea was to depict Marguerite and Julien like a myth or a legend. They were a bit like rock stars. They fascinated all these orphans because they were deviants. They were brother and sister. Jérémy said the film needs to be dealt with in that manner. And then we thought about having orphans. We'll start by showing the orphans and these rumors, and then as time went by, it, we had this idea of uh, telling this fairy tale to these young children. And then the film tells the real story more, but there's this touch of fairy tale, so you don't feel quite so sad, because at the end, uh, the uh, film is pure fiction. As to the actresses, they didn't read the entire script. We told them about the story as though it were a fairy tale. And often fairy tales have a very happy ending. We explained that uh, what they did was uh, a crime, but these uh, young children weren't unduly upset. 
notre enfance. If you think back to your childhood, you realize that you've heard about horrible things. Uh, you might have felt uh, sad, but not unduly uh, uh, upset. And so that's why we decided on this approach in the film. In a way, we had this uh, double way of uh, telling the tale in the film. You have the fairy tale and then the events which unfold. And this enabled the story to become an almost universal one. The uh, story could be told as a fairy tale. It became more human. It wasn't just a question of events that occurred. In Cherbourg, uh, where we shot the film, we met uh, with people who lived in the region, and when we talked to them about Marguerite and Julien, they uh, said to us, well, they're a real legend, they're part and parcel of our lives. And in the orphanage scene, uh, uh, the two characters are almost like heroes. As always with uh, Valérie Donzelli, life wins in the end. You have this uh, young baby born of uh, Marguerite and Julien. Marguerite and Julien actually had a, a child together. We wanted to retain that idea in the film. What I liked was the fact that they come back in a way. In other words, one dies, but the soul remains. People try to destroy this love, but it can't be destroyed. The bodies, the people are killed, but feelings last, and they become reincarnated. Uh, they become part of nature and remain with us. The end is very beautiful. One last question. We talked earlier on about anachronisms. I don't find the mixture of errors totally anachronistic. It's just part of this uh, love which is enduring from a purely technical stance. This was quite difficult in terms of the costumes. How did you work this out while filming? Well, it wasn't easy. We wondered uh, whether uh, things wouldn't uh, appear overdone. We worked very intuitively. These things just came into the film. <laughs> Why should we suddenly have a, a car uh, uh, followed by a stagecoach? What about the helicopter? Obviously, we held discussions uh, with the technical crew. There was Valérie, uh, the person in charge of the costumes and the sets. Uh, discussions were held with the sound engineer and the chief of photography. Photography. And these matters lay at the heart of uh, uh, preparing for the film. After a while, we said to each other, okay, this works, that doesn't. We've seen lots of uh, films set in a given period of history. And why not have anachronisms? But there are no real anachronisms because we're not trying to reconstruct a specific period in history. We've just created a whole universe. There were some medieval aspects, very modern aspects. Everything sort of melds in together. Gradually, the crew was full of uh, questions when we started working on the screenplay, and then the crew started to enjoy it and have fun and started to think, well, can't I slip this into the set? And there was one person who suddenly said to us, well, this lamp would fit in well with the set. Uh, this won't uh, do. And people immediately understood what would work and what wouldn't. So it was hard to write, but uh, we uh, drew on our intuition. It's not always easy to work with Valérie. I had lots of things in my head, but it's hard to uh, give people uh, really precise descriptions. But we didn't want to do just any old thing. Uh, things just came together gradually. Strangely enough, uh, there's great unity in the film. Thank you very much, and long live Marguerite and Julien.